Hi, welcome back. This is Shelly from Crafting Mamas. So this video is in support of a video hop called hashtag thanks for watching art. It is part of a collaboration sponsored by Creative Arts Collaboration, a group of artists on Facebook. Creative Arts Collaboration is a mixture of very experienced, successful YouTube artists and brand new ones. It's a forum to discuss what's working, what isn't, uh, and how to improve your content and your channel and your views. So recently, for those of you that are unaware, YouTube changed its monetization rules. It used to be anyone could put a video up on YouTube and you could opt to be monetized or not. And then based on your content and your views and who watched your ads, you were. Well now the criteria has changed. You must have at least a minimum of a thousand subscribers and four thousand viewed watch hours in one year to be able to be monetized. So I know you're kind of thinking, okay, like, well, what does it have to do with me and how can I help and all that? Well, for me, I can only speak from where I come from. So YouTube is a great forum. You know, I'm an artist. I've been an artist my whole life. And for those of you who aren't familiar with me, I live in the Hawaiian Islands, so I couldn't live further from anyone. YouTube has offered me an opportunity to reach a community of people that I never would otherwise. I live stream twice a week. I have a wonderful collaborative forum of artists that share and come and comment and just hang out. It's a really wonderful thing. For me, what's happened is I'm my creativity has taken me into a new direction. I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm more part of something than by myself in my studio as I've been for many years. So you're thinking, okay, I mean, to be frank, I don't make a lot of money off of YouTube. I do meet the criteria to be monetized, but what got me personally thinking and wanting to be involved is, is YouTube only going to recommend those artists that are monetized? I mean, YouTube does offer free content and we all come and partake in that free content, but it does have things that it needs to, it's a business, it's a company, it needs to stay alive. So how you can help is, first of all, in this video hop, go to my description box below and click on, after you've watched my video, please first like and subscribe and comment. And then after that, go into the description box to the next video in the hop. Watch that video, like and subscribe and comment. It helps all of us. Watch the ads at the beginning of every YouTube video of artists particularly that you enjoy. This way it ensures YouTube stays and continues and those artists can stay as well. If you find a new YouTube artist that you love Subscribe, comment, like their videos. Every little bit helps. Every little bit adds up. Let's all keep this wonderful community of YouTube flourishing and, and going. Okay, that being said, let's get on to the project. Today we're going to make a fabric charm, a fabric bookmark. You can put this bookmark in any book. I happen to be a junk journaler, an avid planner, Midori, Fedori, book lover. These are great for that. Just a really fun little embellishment. So if you want to make a long, all you need is some muslin, some beads. You need a pair of flat nose pliers. They don't have to be crooked like this, but they have to have a smooth center. A pair of round nose pliers, a pair of wire cutters, a pair of scissors, wire, and some inexpensive beads. So the first thing I did was I, the first thing you need to do is measure your book. You want your, your bookmark to be about four inches lar longer, larger than the book. So two inches on each end. So a little bit above and two and below, right? So the next thing you're going to do is I have made a needle from wire. Now you could make this using thread. You could make it using cord, whatever you want. I happen to like the way fabric looks. So you want to take and you want to make yourself a needle. This is a piece of 28 gauge wire. If you've ever beaded before, you know that 
often traditional needles, the beads won't go through. So you want to make yourself a wire needle. It looks like this. I've cut my fabric at an angle on one end and I'm going to slide it through. And then you just want to put your string your beads on. So I've already gone ahead and done that <clears throat> here. And I put three beads on each side. You decide what you want. Now the next step is I'm going to decide one end I have a fabric tassel and the other end I have some little beads that I've dangled off to create movement. So the next step would be to move your beads up on one side and on, on the side that is going to have the tassel you want to create a loop. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my fabric up, I'm going to cut a piece of wire, and I'm going to wrap it around the fabric. Now the wire I'm using to wrap is thicker than 28 gauge. This one is 24 gauge wire. You just The 28 gauge for your needle is very, very, very thin. It's very thin. The This wire is more substantial. So I'm just going to wrap my wire around. I'll use my pliers in the end, but initially I'm going to use my fingers. I love this, the form of YouTube. I, for me, you know, I haven't been on YouTube that long, just a couple of years. And really, honestly, not very, the first year I was on, I, I was very sporadic. It wasn't until I really started live streaming that I, I really began to enjoy YouTube and appreciate the community it offered. So I can't tell you enough, if you find a YouTube artist that you like, please like and subscribe. Okay, you want to take your pliers and you want to, you can see it has like a couple of little wires that are sticking up. You just want to push those down just so you don't get poked. If you guys are available, I live stream every Tuesday and Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. And I do a variety of all sorts of projects for making ATCs, collage. I'm mostly an upcycling artist. I really love making and using upcycled materials. You know, but saying that you can use just about any material that you want in any project I make. Okay, so one end has that. Now I'm also going to take that 24 gauge wire and I'm going to create some loops. So I'm going to take it to the fattest part of my pliers, okay, and I'm going to just, can you see, I'm just going to make several, at the fattest point, I'm going to make several loops. Almost, I'm forming my own split ring. The split ring is like, you know, the ring you see on a keychain where it goes around and around several times so that things don't come off easily. So can you see it's maybe two, it's like three. And I'm just going to snip it close to the end. And I'm going to take my pliers and mash down the little, the end that's sticking up. Right, I'm going to string it through this side of my, the other side, the opposite side from the loop that I just made. I'm going to put it through this side, all the ring, and I'm going to tie a knot. Now I'm only going to do one singular loop, and then I will come back and put some glue to secure the loop. Because my fabric's kind of thick, I don't want a big, thick thing hanging off. Okay, now let's make our tassel. Making a tassel is so easy. I'm going to make mine out of this muslin. And all you need to do is just decide how many strips you want in your tassel, how, how fat you want your tassel. If you were going to make it out of... Um, if you were going to make it out of yarn, I would wrap it around 
a card. But because it's just muslin, I'm not, it's not going to come apart. So I think that's as big as I want, as fat as I want my tassel. I'm going to go back to using wire. Now if you have thread, you could use thread, you could use fabric, whatever you have. I'm just using wire because that's what I have. Find the center and then you're just going to wrap it around. And what I'm going to do is, if you can see, it has a smaller piece and a larger piece. I'm going to hold it right here in the middle and I'm going to turn, put my finger on the small piece and I'm going to turn my tassel. See, and it's starting to wrap around. And I'm going to take my pliers and push it down. Okay, so I found my center. Now I'm going to take another piece of wire and I'm going to wrap it around the top. And this is, like I mentioned to you, 24 gauge wire. But you could use, you could even go back and use your 28 gauge wire if you wanted to use your really thin wire and you could string beads on it as well. And I'm just going to wrap it around as if you would, just a little bit at the top. And wrap it around until I like the tightness or the size of my loop. I really, you know, I think for me being on YouTube has been, it's been really liberating in many ways. I, I get to meet a lot of people that I never would. I get to share my love of upcycling and eclectic art. I've made all kinds of art my whole life. And it's just a really fun way to really get to know people or, I don't know, I enjoy it a lot. So the thought that maybe somebody else's channel wouldn't get be, wouldn't be seen or they wouldn't get uh, the same opportunities, I don't know. Just makes me, makes me like a little bit sad, you know, and makes me think like, I don't even think we, any of us really know how these how the changes on YouTube are going to affect anyone yet. But I'm sure we will all see before we know it. We will all know for sure. Just going to pull this one wire a little tighter. So as artists, how can we be more proactive? I mean, let's face it, we're not a game, we're not gamers, we're not um you know, we're not we're not I have I personally don't make a lot of money on YouTube. Maybe you need hundreds of thousands of views or or whatever it is in order to make a decent amount of money on YouTube. But I think for me, whether I'm making a lot of money or not, it's really the community that it's offered. And it's the free content. Okay, so that's the tassel. I may add a bead to it. Let me see what I have. I have this little green bead. These are all big box store beads, you guys. They're not anything... I'm going to make a loop just like this. See it? And I'm going to string it through the fabric loop that I made on the end of my tassel. And I'm just going to use my fingers first and foremost to wrap, hold one end steady and wrap the wire on the other end. And then I'll, when it comes to the very end, I'll, if you want to be more exact, use your pliers. I looked at this as being like more of a a boho, um, less perfect, more rustic book charm, bookmark. Okay, so one end's done. Now the next end. Okay, so what I've done on the other ends, as you can see here, is I've added some little dangles. I've added some just beads that are wrapped. Let's see, what are, like this. And that's what I'm going to do on this side. So I've gone ahead and done my wire wrapping and then all I'm going to do is make my make my loop and I'm going to feed it through my three my split ring, my my made split ring. And I'm going to go ahead and wrap my wire very rustically, very loose as far down as I want and then snip it off when I when I've gotten, you could wrap all of it or 
then you just want to go back and make sure your ends are tucked in so you don't poke yourself. So that's one. And let's see what else do I have. I have this one, which is just seed beads. And I can show you guys how to do that. It's not that big of a deal. Just sort of a ring of seed beads. I'm going to put that through the split ring as well. Now these make really fun little gifts if you have just a little friend gift, a little happy mail gift you'd like to send somebody, teacher gift, neighbor gift, just something really and really inexpensive to make. And here's another one of those CB loops that I've made and I'll show you how to make that before I let you go if my if time permits. Once again, just wrapping it around and snipping off the end. Now, all I need to do is measure it on my book. I need to pull my beads back down, the ones since I've pushed them all the way up my fabric so that they wouldn't be in the way while I worked. And I am going to go back and take a little dab of probably just designer tacky glue to my knot there just to make sure that it doesn't come undone. And there you have it. All you have to do is find put it through your book. Now, if you don't want yours to have a loop at the top, don't make it, don't put a loop on it. But for me, it was easier to find the, the bookmark that way. No, I want the dangle to hang out the bottom, right? And the, the other dangle to hang out. And then you can just decide if you want it to have a loop or not. And if you do, just take it out and tie it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please, please join us in watching the videos. Hashtag thanks for watching art. If you're an artist and you'd like to learn more about how to create the best content you can on YouTube, come over to Creative Arts Collaboration. And as always, from my heart to your heart, I'm sending you so much aloha. Until next time.